Good day. Just have a bit of an update on some of the trees. So here we got the uh, Good day. Was he buns or bloke? Here you go. But today we're gonna work here on the little crack myrtle. Um Where'd I get it from? I'm trying to think. I think I bought it as a nursery stock. Very close to the beginning, so nearly 12 years ago. Um, it was probably a 20 or $30 stock. And I just put it in the ground and trunk chopped it a few different ways just to create some taper. Um, and the rest is history, it's, you know, I dug it out the ground. I think I dug it out the ground after about three years because it didn't have enough iron and it was hard to try and get iron into it and the leaves were going yellow, but at the same time it did its job and it fattened up the trunk. And since then I've just put it in this pot, well not this pot, but in different pots. One was just like a nursery pot and I've just, you know, grown out long, long branches to create fat branches at the bottom. Another big fat one at the back. And then just shaped the whole tree. And it's really come out really good. Crape myrtle have beautiful bark. Um, if you want to try and get flowers from a crape myrtle, it's very hard to get flowers within the silhouette of the tree. You can get flowers by just letting this stuff go out miles, it'll get flowers, but the flowers will be out here. And then it'll just look silly, just be a, you know, a, a bush. So for me, I opt to keep my crepe myrtle as just a beautiful tree because I have beautiful leaves and, you know, they're just a beautiful tree, beautiful bark, extremely brittle. The roots on them are extremely brittle and so are the branches. They don't like to be bent too much. Um, I've bent most of the branches when they were young. You'll obviously see the tree after when it's all done. And today we're just going to give it a bit of a trim. So I gave it a trim a month, or uh, maybe two months ago. So sort of late spring and or early summer. And now we're going to give it another trim. And this will be its last trim. So we're getting to the point of the year we're almost in Feb. Things shut down end of March, start of April. So we're at almost the point of the year where we start to think about not pruning your deciduous stuff. But I think for the next week or so, I'll prune anything that's deciduous that needs pruning. And uh, it'll have enough time to shoot out new shoots, which will be short and small. And hopefully over winter, through the winter frost and stuff, it can keep a lot of that stuff. Um, and I won't be cutting, well, the other trees I'll probably cut back to a nice shape and choose the branching that I want in winter when they all shut down. But this one, I don't. This one I'll cut back now and I won't touch it again until spring next year because... I find the crepe myrtle do not like cutting back in winter when they're dormant. It can create a lot of dieback. And that's just my experience. You might have a different experience, but that's my experience. But anyway, so we're going to work on this. Also, uh, I just wanted to show you a few updates of trees outside because I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you what, in the last week, things since I've done that last video of the bench tour, Things have just gone nuts, like my wisteria has gone from little buds to like in full leaf now. Um, even got some flowers on it, so I'll do some updates. And also, uh, another cool thing, because we live out here, we see stumpy lizards or shingleback lizards all the time. And anyway, I thought I would just show you some a couple of the lizards that are just resident. They just cruise around all the time. We see them every day. Um, there's probably about four or five that we see every day. 
and they just live in and around the house eating what they can and I ended up feeding it some blackberries and it loved it so uh, before we start working on the tree quick update of the benches and uh, feeding of the now we'll do feeding of the lizard at the end okay it's pretty cool so please stick around for the feeding of the lizard it's a wild lizard and you know they've been around for millions of years back with dinosaurs these lizards so stick around watch that at the end I'll do the bench tour now uh, bottle brush I've had a rough couple of years, but I had good flowering this year. It's got massive amounts of good, new, healthy growth on it. Oh, just a quick word too. We had 45 degree day yesterday. Day before was 41 or 42. And I wasn't home. I was on a holiday. Still got the apples. <laughs> I was on a holiday and I was relying on my automatic watering system. And it worked, but not properly because there's been a bit of a glitch with it. it changes time on its own and so it changed time which meant that instead of watering throughout the whole day it was watering throughout the whole night at different intervals and then during the day 45 degrees I wasn't home and it didn't water all day so when I got home everything here was bone dry completely bone dry but somehow I didn't sustain any real damage everything looks okay so the watering overnight must have really got them all soaked up, ready to go. And then they they survived fine. There's no burning, really. The apple tree had a bit of burning anyway from too much fertiliser, I think. But it's got new growth coming in, which is fine. As you can see. So that did have some burning anyway. I'd say too much fertiliser. It could be, could be over-watered when the outside of the leaves go like that it can be a sign of overwatering, but I think it's a fertilizer because the new growth come along fine and it's only in a small pot so I don't see how it can be overwatered. and it's not dried out because if it dried out you should get all the leaves brown off uh, also this um, what do we call it the Chinese elm Hope you can see it there is actually really powering this year. I've been keeping the fertilizer up to everything pretty hard, which is why the apple tree burnt. But look at all that new fine growth all over this thing. And the branch branches that are left to thicken up down there are going gangbusters as well. Also the almond tree that's really shot back looking healthy. And another one I wanted to show you, I know I did an update not long ago, but I'm just doing a really quick one now is this um, red gum you can see all of the all of the shoots everywhere on this thing now you can see all the new leaves everywhere just completely covered every single shoot has shot so that's pretty cool even this one at the back that looks like it's not is and all the old shoots have shot and there is massive amounts of back budding massive amounts so I'm wondering whether this is going to be the new method for me I think it will be because instead of it slowly getting weaker and weaker and then losing branches it's not only retained all the branches it's gaining more you have a look down here look at that new shoots new shoots before it was losing branches now it looks like it wants to gain um, another new shoot outside there that's all brand new shoot um, this trunk down here has got all new shoots on it they're all brand new never had them before down here there's a new shoot another one at the back down there some on the inside there this is all brand new shoots so it's never done it before to me at all it's just slowly lost branches like this and this one and slowly got weaker on the bottom but gained the strength at the top so now we're actually getting back budding at the bottom. So that's pretty cool. So that's going to become a normal summer thing. Whether I do it once or twice, I don't know. We'll see how we go. But looking really good. Uh, what else did I want to show you guys? I already showed you that the other day. So that's a big, 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 massive olive. And that's got some green shoots on it. 
and there's some coming out over here somewhere the other thing I wanted to show you was well, one look at the green on that that's my ash tree look how dark green and beautiful all that growth is so that's after a defoliation and also I defoliated my uh, lemon tree just for a bit of an experiment it's got a beautiful big base on that and look at this it's got all new leaves coming out everywhere and they've actually got really good colour and shine to them rather than the old yellow leaves that were on there they're actually looking really good there's a little one down there growing so that's, that's about it, oh and also I wanted to show you the uh, coral bark maple with the beautiful trunk on it look at this, it's actually pushing more strength out of the bottom now after defoliation than what it is the top so the top's actually slow to shoot back, really slow so we'll, you know, we'll see what happens but that's actually probably a good thing because it means it's going to strengthen the bottom branches more than the top very interesting, I'm not sure they are meant to be apically dominant but not sure another thing is the well this Chinese elm's going absolutely nuts hope you can see that it's going to be a cool tree it's going to be a very natural tree with a lot of upright branches but also this is the first time my trident has come back with proper nice leaves normally they're all deformed and wilted and crappy looking this is the first time ever I've had it come out with some beautiful leaves also there's a crepe myrtle going um, there's not much else to show you I don't think um, oh okay so what I thought was a tea tree but anyway that was the one that dried out I potted up into a bigger pot so it would stay wetter and I thought it was a tea tree that dried out but there's actually a tag in here and it says that it's a Malaluca Bracteata 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 maybe I don't know anyway I'm not Spanish speaking or whatever the bloody scientific name is so I don't know but anyway that's burnt but there's hope because it's not a tea tree there is hope that it could back bud because it's got a cool little slender trunk on it and eventually it might make a cool little tree if all this reshoots but she's looking sad now let's keep an eye on her um she's come quite come quite's gone fine oh the other one i wanted to show you is this camellia starting to Put out new shoots i completely defoliated that one bit of an ugly looking tree but we've got plans for it to be a really tall tree we'll see what happens um this is the silver birch okay i hope you guys can see that so that's the silver birch that we did a complete defoliation on and that's that's back button fine it's got leaves all over it some are a bit slower than others, but they're still shooting out. And then lastly, I think I'll just show you this pomegranate that struggled, that had the really bad sooty mold all over it from the scale, is really powering on now. And the Turkish oak that we defoliated is now back budding. But look at this one. This is the uh, wisteria. And I showed you that only a week ago. It had barely any sort of shoots on it at all. And now look at it. Just absolutely covered in shoots. And it's actually doing a second flush of flowers. Now that I've defoliated it. It's actually putting out a second flush of flowers. So that is really cool. So... Anyway, let's get to the shed. We're going to work on this little guy here. Need to trim. This is me little 
crack myrtle. As you can see, she needs another trim. So let's get that in the shed, work on that one. Pretty cool. Oh, the peach tree at the back has super green leaves as well. That's a fruiting uh, peach. So that'll be pretty cool as well. Some branches are slower to shoot, but they are shooting. So we'll see what happens. Same again with that one. It's actually shooting the bottom branches first, which is probably a good thing. Um, on an apically dominant tree because it'll mean the bottom ones will get stronger and then the top ones will hopefully shoot out I think defoliation could be part of my general routine of a lot of plants anyway let's get to the shed oh sorry guys I know we're going to get to the shed but I just wanted to show you this is a uh, just a standard green maple Pretty sure. Anyway, I defoliated that one. It's got a decent trunk on it. Fairly decent trunk. I defoliated that one as well, and that one's shooting back. So, see how she goes. But pretty cool. Pretty cool. Alright, let's get to the shed. Okay, and now let's work on this tree. And then we're going to have lizards at the end. Pretty cool. Really cool. Just, I just love having, you know, nature at your door, doorstep like that. All right, cool. Let's get onto this tree. Okay, guys, so I've turned the brightness of my phone screen down. It is still a 30 something degree day here, so it's possible that it'll still shut off. I've had a lot of trouble with my phone shutting off lately. Um, so anyway, these shoots, I'll just show you a few. This, I believe this crepe myrtle, I bought a heap of crepe myrtles when I bought a heap because just loved them. And my mate Phil, who went to the Adelaide Bonsai Show, shout out to old Phil, great bloat. Anyway. This was his favourite species, and you know what? It's transferred to me. I love them. They aren't my favourite. Probably, you know, second or third favourite. And I just love them. But I'll show you the health, the absolute health of this tree or bush or whatever you want to call it. Look at that. See the shine. Look at the shine. Crepe myrtle are prone to having yellow veins in the leaf from lack of um lack of iron but look at that absolutely healthy as this thing is the healthiest tree ever i'll bring it even closer for the trim so so healthy you know when it's got these really soft dark dark green shoots that is so healthy. So this is going to back bud. Well, not back bud, but at least shoot out again before we, uh, before spring. Before spring. Before winter, Sam, you, you clown. You know, YouTube don't like swearing, so I can't swear. If I swear, I don't make any money. Oh, and by the way, just an update on the money side of things. I haven't been paid anything yet, but it is adding up slowly. <coughs> Not a lot of money, but you know, enough to buy a couple of pots or something. Or pay, you know, at least pay for the internet or water. But what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get around to is an update on all that. I had a lot of trouble with my bank card because the bank card only wanted um, one address. And that address was my address that I'm at. So I gave him that. And that was it. Then it went through. And I'm like, well, I don't have post out here because I'm too far in the middle of nowhere. The post office doesn't post out here. And last time that happened, I just never got it. That's with the old AdSense pin number. So I never got the AdSense pin number. So in the meantime, I've changed my AdSense 
address completely, not to my residential but to my postal. And they're apparently reposting out my, um, you know, this stuff is just such a pain. I can't believe all the, all the stuff you've got to go through to try and monetize your channel. So the AdSense, um, I re-sent a pin, so I've got to wait anywhere up to four weeks for a new pin. But the thing is, because I haven't verified my account in four months, soon, within the next month, it'll shut down unless I get that pin in time. If I get the pin in time, I can verify with that, which now my pin is being sent, I hope, to my postal address. The thing is, they don't ask for a postal address, they only ask for your residential. And then when you go look for, you know, Sometimes things give you a second option for a postal address, but not these accounts. So when I get that, then I can verify and then I can stay monetized. And I'll make you guys watching worthwhile. Because at the moment, I'd hate to think that you're watching ads for nothing. You know, ads do suck a bit. And also, then I got my bank account set up I did an online application to a bank account I did it separate to our normal account with the wife and all that because I just wanted it separate because it's like a whole separate thing but anyway I did it online and then what happened they sent it to my bloody residential without giving me an option I put in my residential thinking they'd give me an option for a postal towards the end of the application, but no, no, nothing. Just so annoying, setting up stuff is so annoying. And because I'm so old, you know, not old, but getting behind in technology, um, it's a real struggle for me. I really struggle to do all this stuff. And I spend, what some per one person might spend half an hour on the computer, mucking around, sorting it out. I spend about three hours, so anyway, so about three hours later, I worked out on the AdSense that I could resend the pin. As far as the bank card, I'm so, so lucky that they tried to send it to my postal address, which is actually sends it to the wrong post office that I, that I have a post uh, PO box with. So that, um, the wrong post office, I guess they decided that it was more important than just an AdSense pin because they would have got the AdSense pin, but they just decided it wasn't important enough to try and work out where it's actually meant to go. So they just threw it in the bin, I'm assuming. But a bank card, I guess they thought was more important. So they sorted it out and it had not at this address, blah, 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 sent back. To where they thought it might be then they found our postal address and guess what the card turned up so long story short I have now got the card then I spent the next three or four hours activating an online account with a bank card online banking mobile banking all that stuff which I've never ever done before in my life set all that up then I linked it to my YouTube account or the AdSense account then the AdSense had to send a certain amount of cents to my account. They said, we're going to send you the sum of less than $1. When you can verify exactly how much that is, we'll verify your banking account and your money will then be transferred in. Well, they sent me so many cents. I verified it. I said, all oh, good. And now, so far, no money from them, even though there's money in there. I think there's nearly 500 bucks in there. No money from them. And I think they're waiting to verify the PIN, which is the last step in this whole puzzle. So once the PIN is verified, which hopefully is now going to the right address, everything will be sorted and will be all sweet and will be 
just smooth sailing, doing the videos, getting paid into my bank account, and then I can either buy more bonsai stuff, more pots, help pay for water or the computer uh, programs, whatever. But it won't be a lot of money unless more people subscribe and watch to my channel. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and watch. But it won't be a lot of money, it'll just be a bit of a help, you know. Um, I would do it anyway, to be honest, because I just love doing it. Um, so it's not about the money for me, but if I can get a little bit of extra money doing it, so that's um, great. So Whew, I am sweating. This shed is bloody hot. I guess from the heat wave, but I've got beads of sweat pouring off me. Anyway, that whole conversation took too long to the point where I didn't get to explain anything I was doing. But basically, all I did was chop back everything to one or two nodes. And seeing as this is a dwarf uh, crepe myrtle anyway, I'm pretty sure. Um... The internodes are very small. I keep trying to turn the big one and then it doesn't turn because the small one's got one. I can actually go opposite ways. <laughs> so, anyway, so I think I'm pretty well trimmed up again. I'll let this shoot out once more. Hopefully, it does. Hopefully, it's got enough energy. It looks so super healthy. Like I say, this year I've really focused on pumping the fertiliser in. The only one that I've had a trouble with fertiliser burn is my apple tree. Everything else seems okay. And I wonder whether the apple tree would be okay if I just did it in the pot. But I've been foliar fertilising as well as in the soil, in the pot. So maybe just for the apple i might in the future just do the pot not the leaves and maybe it won't burn because i'm pretty sure that's what's going on with it um but all my other trees have been fine cool so that's it so these little weeds in the bottom i'm just going to leave for now see what happens see how they go Yeah, that's it. So I'm thinking I'm at the back now. Or is that the front? And yeah, I might need to do a bit of drastic pruning. That's the back. That's the front. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so what we've got here, I'm pretty sure that's the front. I'm looking at the back. So... What we've got here is I've actually let it overgrow a bit too much. You don't want to have a whole naked trunk, but you do want to see the trunk. And I believe... That'd be really cool if that one there grows out there. Um, but anyway, getting sidetracked. I believe... You want to see some of the trunk, but not all of the trunk. And I think that's blocking too much, so I'm going to cut that back a bit harder. So you can see more of that beautiful trunk. Bark's not ready to peel off yet. When this bark exfoliates, it's a bit like a lizard. Pretty funny I shouldn't use that analogy seeing as I've seen a lizard today. But when it gets fatter, the bark exfoliates and it leaves these beautiful different colours in there. Absolutely beautiful. But anyway, we'll give you a bit of a close-up, bit of a spin. This tree is super, super healthy. And we'll put it back out on the bench and let it grow. Cool. Okay, guys. We'll show you. Uh, stick around for the lizard at the end. I want you guys to see that. Um, sorry I didn't talk much about my techniques, but basically I cut everything to a short shoot. 
these things don't seem to put out three shoots from each spot. They only seem to put out two-ish, roughly. So it's pretty safe just to cut everything back short to one or two nodes, depending on the length. But I'm pretty sure it's dwarf variety, so uh, two nodes is fine. Maybe on the standard variety with a bigger leaf, bigger internodes, you might want to do uh, one node. But for now, we've done two. Like I say, we're not going to get the flowering because the flowering would have I would have had to have not cut it back and let them grow out, and you would have got the flowers miles out from the outside. So anyway, um, you see. Okay, guys, no worries. Just making sure I was in frame. You can see the sweat beating off my head. It's bloody hot in here. Um, like I said, 45 degrees Celsius yesterday. Luckily, all the plants were strong enough and I had the shade up and they survived, even though they didn't get watered through the whole heat of the day. But they did get a water overnight because the timer stuffed up and decided that it would water at night and not during the day. But anyway, it's all good. Um... Cheers for watching us, Bonsai Bloke. Please like, share, subscribe, tell your mates about the channel. I'll give you a spin on the way out, and don't forget to hang around for the lizard at the end. Oh guys, one last thing, just before I see the lizard, Australia Day coming up tomorrow, so watch out for a fun video. Let's hope I'm in a good mood, and I've got me drinking boots on, but anyway, I'm going to try and make a good fun video, so let's see how that shapes up. No worries, cheers, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Guys, I just love being out in the bush here. You have a look at this, you just go outside. There's a stumpy just chilling. See you, mate. Catch you later. And come around the corner here. Look at all this crap that's got to go to the shed. Then you come around the corner here. Here's another one just chilling. Beautiful things. The stumpy or the shingleback lizard. Really cool. Beautiful. Just chilling out, having a sleep. Catching a few rays. Beautiful. Actually, I'll try and feed it. You ready? I'll just bring back some food. You know the funny things, even though it knows that I know that it's there, it um doesn't bother to go. So I'm going to try a blackberry. I know that they eat blueberries because I've done that before. I'm going to try a blackberry. Oh yeah, look at that one. Give it a go, mate. Oh yeah, look at that. So cute. 
oh, so good to have them around. Quite big, you know, there's my hand. And, you know, it's longer than my hand. Want some more? You want some more? I'll go get you some more. No worries. Back in a sec. One thing I did forget to mention is we're actually really fortunate that our dog doesn't attack things. Even though he's a Kelpie, um, he doesn't attack lizards. He's really good. He just, when he was young, we told him not to, and he's listened. He just looks at him and walks away. So really cool. So our old dogs used to attack him and kill him, which was really sad, but. You know, the new dog Leo he loves he loves to leave things alone. See you, bud. <laughs>